Heather Hakes. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited to share with you my process of mindset and manifesting, and I'm offering you a free gift. If you want to learn how to manifest more money now, I've created a free video training that you can grab at my website, heatherhakes.com. Again, it's a free video training on manifesting money at heatherhakes.com. Welcome to today's interview. I've brought on Carrie Mitten. Carrie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Heather. Please give the listeners a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? So I live in Northern California. Um, I, we've been here for 21 years um, and I am a heart-centered transformational life coach and speaker. That's kind of a mouthful. So what does that mean exactly? Sure. Yeah. So I, I work with primarily women who are in a some type of transition in their life could be um, going back into the workforce, could be uh, having, you know, a new baby. It could be um, just knowing that there's something more out there for them and not quite being able to put their finger on it. And so I coach them into um, really navigating that gap between where they are now currently in their life and where they would love to be in their life. Well, that sounds fascinating because I believe we all go through transitions. And obviously, I think a big one is a midlife crisis. But even I'm 35 and life hasn't exactly gone as I planned. I thought I would be married and have children and, you know, have climbed the corporate ladder. But I've taken complete detours from all of that. And so I, I could see how somebody even in their mid-20s goes through transition. And then once you're married, you have transition. And Obviously, once the kids are grown, there's transition. So yeah, there's so many transitions in life. Absolutely. And usually, you know, it's, it's, it's somebody who just is seeking, there's something seeking to emerge in them, you know, um, that they know that there's just something more out there and, and it, it can happen at any time. Like you said, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I'd love, can you please give a little more background, you know, like what brought you to where you're at today? How, what was your journey like? Hmm. Well, like you said, it was transition after transition <laughs> after transition. Um, so when I, um, I was in the workforce for about 15 years, um, and then got married, had children, took 17 years off, um, to raise my children. And, um, when I went back to work all my life, I knew that I, I wanted to serve people. That was my heart and my passion. I wanted to serve people, but I couldn't quite figure out how to do that. And so I did what everybody told me to do. I went into corporate America, right? And I, and I kind of followed the, the structure, um, but I was never one to really stay inside the boundaries. And so I, I was constantly reinventing myself, trying to, trying to figure out how to live into this dream of serving people. Um, and like, like I said, you know, I, I was, it's like fitting a, a square peg into a round hole. And finally, <clears throat> I was offered an opportunity to partner with a friend in a recruiting company um, where we were, it was a staffing agency. And I invested my entire life savings in this business. And about two, uh, about a year and a half into it, realized that this really wasn't serving my dream, that I couldn't serve people. They, they weren't receptive to it. You know, they, I worked very, very hard and, and to help people find jobs and, um, it was just a very, very dark place. Mm -hmm. And at that time, then I decided that, you know, I needed to find, I needed, I needed some help. I, I've been trying all this, you know, all these things on my own. I wasn't able to get where I wanted to be. And so I sought out a life coach and I found a certification program. Um, well, I, I did the program and then realized that I could actually coach this and teach people this, these principles and help them in their transitions. And so I, um, I dove in and spent lots of time studying and, and learning the principles and got certified about two years ago. So I know I, I worked in corporate myself for over a decade, but for me, I just felt like I was going through life's motions and, you know, I was cheering Friday and dreading Monday <laughs> and there are some people who love corporate. And so I am not dissing them at all. Like if you love what you do and and you feel on passion and purpose, go you. But I feel the majority of people, it's almost, I guess for me, I'll just explain from my perspective. I just felt like a cog in a wheel. I was just mm -hmm. going through life's motions and I just, 
you know, then I got into the hitting snooze and then (laughs) I don't know, life just, it wasn't (laughs) exciting anymore. And now, although entrepreneurship, I'm going to tell you for me, it's not easy. It's a lot of Mm self-discipline. I wear, you know, seven hats, but that time and financial freedom is so worth it to me. And I feel on passion and purpose. So I want to ask you from your perspective, since you have done this and then where you are today, what's the difference? Oh, (laughs) I don't think we have enough time to even talk about the difference, Heather. It's, it is, um, you know, I, I'm a completely different person now. Um, You know, a, a, a mentor of mine once said, when I was really struggling with what I wanted to do, she said, um, find what you love and go do that. Because when you love what you do, you become alive. And as Dr. Howard Thurman, who is Martin Luther King's uh, mentor, Dr. Uh, Howard Thurman said, find what makes you come alive and go do that because the world needs people who are alive, right. especially right now. And so I, I took that to heart and I really, I, I, I really, created a vision for my life. What would I love? I asked myself, what would I love? And I, le- and I leaned into that question and created the life that I love by being the person in that vision and raising my, vib- my vibration to attract the things in my life that I would truly love. And now, you know, I, I mean, prior to that, that, I was sick all the time. I was depressed. I was anxious. I was worried. I was constantly struggling with finance, you know, finances. Um, I hated my life. You know, my family was falling apart around me. Um, my, you know, my marriage wasn't, was, wasn't doing very well. We, we were constantly struggling. We were on, I said, we were on the struggle bus, you know, yeah. constantly living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. <clears throat> and now that I've lit and, and, and I'm still living into, you know, as we're, as I'm continuing to evolve, I always have a brand new vision, but but I've lived into this beautiful life of, you know, finally serving my dream and coming alive and having no more, you know, I'm now, I feel I'm now in the flow and the current of life and it's absolutely amazing. Okay. I would love to deep dive this a Mm -hmm. little more. And so a, a thought I had that somebody listening may be thinking, well, what if their love and their passion is running or cooking or traveling or, you know, something not a technical product or service. And they're thinking, well, how, how could I ever make money doing that? Mm-hmm. And so I guess my thought was, we're both in it. Oh, I didn't ask you, but I love Abraham Hicks. I love Abe, listen to Abe a lot. And Abe is all about chasing joy or even, have you seen the, the newer Disney movie, Soul? Yes, I have. Okay, so love Soul, yeah. my takeaway from that movie was our, because everybody's chasing their purpose, right? And the message I got from soul was our only purpose is to have fun, live to live, to be in joy. And then the spark is to go do that thing that lights you up, which I think that's what you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you truly, when you truly um, live a life of abundance and joy and happiness, you are in a, in an alignment and vibration of the, of things that will, you will attract into your life that will bring you more joy and by, and, and love and happiness, all that stuff. Right. And so, you know, when you think about if, if, if your passion is running, well, then how can you, what can you do in the, in the running field? What can you, how can you, how can you expand that? Um, and, and, you know, it's just by being the person in the vision, Right. So if you have a vision for running and you love to run and you would love to monetize that or create some type of you know, business around that, well, then go do it because you will open up doors that you would never be able to open up before because you're on a frequency that's in harmony with your with your life's vision. You see, everybody is given a vision. Not everybody realizes this. Everybody is given a vision and it's as unique as your thumbprint. And that vision, you're being called into it. You're being, we're all growing. We're all, we are all on an upward spiral of our next level of becoming, right? If we're not, we're dying, right? We're the opposite effect. Um, but, but, and that vision is given to us so that we can grow into the person that is in that vision. 
It's not about the things that we have. It's about who we become in the process. Oh my. Okay. So that sentence, I have not understood that more than I have in the very last couple of weeks, because I was so conditioned into chasing the thing, Mm. to running a marathon, to getting more money, to getting a job or being in a relationship. And then I, it really was this whole aha moment. It was who I became in the process and the byproduct is the end result. Yes. Yes. So question for you, because I feel like most people, sure, they want to go do these things, but the only thing what I've written down is most people get hung up in the, well, how, Yes. how do I get started? How is that going to happen? And I like to say the, how is not your job. That's right. That's right. We get to remember that <clears throat> infinite intelligence is always at work and always at work for our greater good, always. And if we tap into that, into the spiritual side of our nature, remember, I mean, I shouldn't say remember, but I'm going to tell you, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, right? And we're navigating, if we're navigating on the human plane because it's physical and tangible, we, we're not tapping into the spiritual side of our nature, which is connected to infinite intelligence. We, were, we live in a universe, right? One song, one mind one power. Yeah. And so when we tap into that infinite intelligence, you know, we are going to be given insights, ideas, inspirations that will help us to take the action steps towards our vision. So the how is all about leaning into your intuition, tapping into infinite intelligence so that that allows you to take the action steps to create to, to move towards your vision. It's not the, how is not our job. It's the what. And so I love to give takeaways or something that a listener can implement right now. So, you know, is it something that you coach or what could you share that is a process to even get started that maybe if they have a vision, how do they expand it and get excited about it and, and take that first step? How do you do that? Well, it's all about changing your thinking, first of all, because our results are the direct reflection of the thoughts that we've been thinking. So notice the thoughts that you've been thinking, you know, notice the thoughts, even as we're speaking, you know, sometimes our thoughts go towards contraction, you know, like that can't happen to me. That would never happen to me. I don't have a vision, right. Or expansion. But yeah. You know, I'd like to, I'd like to think about that. I'd like to really move into, you know, understand that. What does that look like? How does that work? And so when you are, when you are noticing your thoughts and shifting those thoughts, then you can ask the universe, what is it that I would love? What is it that I would love? And really, really think about that. You know, it's a different question when you ask yourself, what would I love as opposed to, well, what does this, my circumstances say that I can do? Or what does, you know, COVID say that I can do? Or what does my bank account say that I can do? Yeah. That's lose. That's, that's, that's giving, giving away your power. When you ask, what would I love that you are in a powerful position? And so then you write down, what would I love? What would I love for my vision? What would I love to do for my life? And then you allow infinite intelligence to work through that and listen to your intuition and take the action steps in order to achieve that. There's a whole process, obviously <laughs> towards that, that I take my, my clients through, but you know, I would say, you know, ask yourself, what would I love? Well, and my thought is, if that's a hard question, especially if somebody's in their 30s or 40s or up, and they've just become so monotonous in a routine, they've maybe kind of feel like they've lost themselves. I would suggest going back to, and I only realized this through writing my first book, when I was a young girl, I geeked out and I still do as an adult. I go to Target every August and I love the school supply aisle. I love crayons. And I know this is ridiculous, but I love post-its and organizing. I love that stuff. And when I was a very young girl, I always wanted to be a teacher. Then I got to college, found out they made like 35 grand a year. And I decided that was terrible. So I went through the corporate route because I was kind of money driven. And now you know, decades later, this whole thought of teaching turned into a completely different realm. And so I guess what I'm getting at, maybe 
as a kid, you loved drawing or painting or creating, or I have no idea what your passion is, but go back and remember what brought you joy or what excites you today. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you can, you can do, you know, you and the power of breathing, you can do anything that you want, anything that you put your mind to what you hold in your mind, you can hold in your hand. Yes. And so it's just a matter of, you know, of taking that step. Can you give some examples, whether it's you personally, or maybe some clients, how they stepped into, oh my gosh, this is my vision and how they lined up with it. And then what came, you know, what, what happened for them? Transpired. Um, sure. So I ha- I'm working with a, with a woman right now. Um, she, her vision was to own her own business. Um, she wanted to be a, so- a solopreneur, right? And she'd, she'd raised her two children. Um, they're, you know, they're, one is in college. The other one is getting ready to go to college. And she, she really kind of found herself in a spot where she didn't know what her next step was. You know, she'd been a mom for many, many years, for many years. And um, she was working as a paralegal and she was working with this, uh, another woman um, in her office. And um, but she knew that she wanted to go out on her own and do her own thing. And while working with me and, and creating a vision, her vision was some type of solopreneurship. Um, while working with me, she realized that um, the woman that she'd been working with was looking for someone to purchase her business. She, they had never talked about it before, but she was given the inspiration one day to just tell her her vision. And the woman said to her, you know, I am looking for somebody to purchase this business. I'm, I'm ready to, you know, to retire and get out. So she ended up purchasing the business and she's now a solopreneur and loving every minute of it and is 10 X her income and, um, and loves what she's doing. Um, not everybody loves being a paralegal, but that is, that's something that she absolutely loves. Um, I have another woman that, um, she, um, (laughs) she, when she came to me, she, all her life, she always wanted to live in a log cabin. That was, she had that dream. when she said she was a little girl, I mean, and so, but she never, she, she'd been trying all her life to have this log cabin. And working with me, creating a vision of exactly what that log cabin looks like and walking through the hallway of the log cabin and smelling the pine and looking out on the field and really visioning what that log cabin looks like. While she was working with me, she, was, she found the property. Um, her and her husband bought the property in Temecula, California mm-hmm. on an um, a, um, olive uh, farm uh, with olive trees all over, absolutely beautiful, and 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 built the blueprints. Um, I had the bl- blueprints done, and they're getting ready to break ground um, this spring. So you know, but she had she had been trying to get to her dream her whole life since she was a little girl. You can't get to your dream; you must come from it. Whoa! Explain that. Say that again. Yeah, you you cannot get to your dream. You must come from it. In order to come from it, you must become it. In other words, when you when you build a vision, you become the person in the vision. See, there's a great story about a man who goes into to cash a check into the bank, and he and he he goes up to the teller and he says to the teller, "I'd like to cash this check." And the teller says, "Sure, you can cash this check. Just sign your name to the back of it, and I'll cash the check for you." And he says, "No, I don't want to. I, I don't want to." give you my check. And then you may not give me the money. And the teller said, but sir, it's banking policy. You have to sign your name to the back of the check. And finally, the, the young teller had had enough. And he said, you know, I'm not gonna be able to help you. So he goes to a second bank and he goes to the same process. And the teller says, can't help you here. He goes to the third bank and the teller says, sir, you have to sign your name to the back of the check. And the man says, just this one time, can I please, you know, just give you the check and then I'll sign it after you give me the money. And the teller got really frustrated, reached underneath the, the counter, reached over the counter with uh, a rubber baseball bat and whacked the guy in the top of the head. And he said, sign the darn check. And the guy said, and so he signed the check and he got his money and he went back to the first teller and the, he said, look down the street, I got my money. 
And the teller said, yeah, but I bet you had to sign your name to the back of the check first. And he said, yeah, but nobody explained it to me the way they did. <laughs> and I love that story because it fits perfectly here because it's, it's my story and it's your story that we go to the teller of life, right? We go to our imagination and we say, I want my life to be like this. I want my bank account to look like this. I want my business to look like this. And we, you know, and, and life says, sure, great. You go ahead and be the, become the person that you want to be and I'll sign that check or I'll, I'll cash that check for you, right? We have to put our name to the things we say we want in order to have the life that we love before we will get it. We have to become the person in the vision first. And then we'll track attract the things into our life that we say that we want. Yeah. We don't become who we, we don't become what we want. We become who we are. Yeah. Or I guess another way to think of that or how I explain it is you, especially when it comes to dating or relationships, if you want this dream relationship that you desire or imagine in your life, you yeah. Or I remember Dr. Joe Dispenza said it recently on Lewis Howe's podcast. You have to be that person. So make a list of everything you want. Be that person. <clears throat> yes. But even when you're talking about these visions, I always talk about it as kind of like becoming version 2.0. Because if your current self is stuck in poverty thinking or you know negative thoughts and behaviors and patterns, but you ultimately want this on the other side... Do you see the disconnect that you can't be this current person with and want this vision? So is what you're saying, not only you think it and you become it, but that's when you up level or change the paradigms, the byproduct is the vision. Is that fair? Well, I don't, I wouldn't, I would say that, that the, the life of the vision is the byproduct, right? So it's not necessarily about the things. I mean, I, you know, I have a vision board in my office that I, you know, I, I, I want this beautiful home and on a lake in Michigan, I want to travel the world. I want to do all these things. It's not about the things it's about who we become in the process. I have to grow into the person that can do all those things and have all those things, right? And so it's about, it's about me becoming who I need to be in order to, 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 to fulfill that vision. But again, like I said before, we're always growing. We're always up leveling, right? If we're not, you know, we're stuck in a default pattern of our life and we're not, you know, we're not going anywhere. And so, <clears throat> so I, I, you know, get the, the lake house in Michigan, um, you know, I, I get to fulfill that vision and then I move on to the next one. Right. We're always wanting. Oh, okay. So question, I'm curious if maybe you could explain, cause you shared that, you know, previously before you got into flow and alignment and, and stepped into this vision, and obviously you've <laughs> had a change. What were you like previously when you were struggling in your relationship and money and felt depressed and anxious? Like those, that seems like night and day. Yeah. So it was a mindset shift. I can tell you that for sure. I, I realized at, at that point in my life, I felt like life was happening to me mm. and, and, and I was resisting life. And, and I was, it was, like I said, I was on the struggle bus. I was struggling with everything. And once I realized that life is not happening to me, life is happening through me, then life became so much easier. Sorry, my working from home. This is what happens. Dogs. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but when I realized that, that, you know, I get to be in the flow and the, in the current of life, um, you know, by, by just allowing things. And I say to myself all the time, you know, this is what it looks like when it's all coming together. It's in perfect alignment. And, and the content of my life, the things that have happened in the past, that's, I call that content is now the curriculum of my evolution. I use that content as a seed. I look for the seed. I, you know, I, I, I was telling you earlier, Napoleon Hill is, is somebody that I, I read quite a bit of his books. And he says, every adversity, every heartache, every failure carries with it the seed of equal or greater value. And so if we look for the seed and we, we really get curious on that seed, we can create we can grow in anything that we want to do too. 
We just use that as the curriculum of our evolution. Yeah. I'm just going to say, I guess, I think a lot of people, what happens, and I even found myself in this, we get stuck in, we've had this experience, but now we attach meaning and our identity to it. So rather than just understanding, okay, that was an experience and to grow from it, it's like people keep carrying this experience with them instead of letting it go. Is that kind of, is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, I I mean, Yes and no. So we look at it, you know, our subconscious mind doesn't know good from bad, right from wrong, right? So really what I'm talking about is we get to recreate some new patterns of belief in our, in my, in our subconscious. But we look at what's happened in our life, the content of my life. So, um, so when, we, when we talk about the content of our life, you know, our, what's happened in our past is, is our, is our, those are all our belief systems. It pours into our belief system, right? So what we do with that is what determines our future. So if we go back to the past and we say, okay, that was bad, right? Then we if we carry that into the future, that's our, that's our structure. That's our belief system. But what we get to do is look at it and go, well, that was content right? That was, that was something that happened. What do I get to learn from that content to use it for the curriculum for my growth? So instead use it as a building block rather than staying stuck because of this experience. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Every adversity, every heartache, every failure carries with it the seed of equal or greater value. Yes. So then question for you, what are you doing on a regular basis, whether it's daily or, or what are your routines to keep you, because I call this building the mindset muscle. And mm-hmm. for me, this is definitely, you know, literally putting in the reps, doing the work, continually to overcome myself. Mm-hmm. What is your process like? I do the work every morning. You know, I wake up before my feet hit the ground. I say, thank you for another day not yet lived that I get to co-create this day, no, however I want, right? As long as I'm tapped into that infinite intelligence, that power that's breathing me. And then I start the day with meditation and I start the day with um, affirmation. And then I do a lesson um, because I'm coached. Uh, Every good, every good coach is coached as well. Right. So I, I'm given things to do as life work. And then I, and then I do my, you know, I go through the day doing my work, you know, creating, creating my life story in, in the coaching business. And, you know, and the other thing that I do every day is I read my vision. I read my vision because I want to put myself in that vibration that's in alignment with my vision. So I can attract the things in my life that I, that I want, that I'm looking for. Well, and something similar, I call it a morning manifesto. And I say that you can do it in three ways. One, I've written very descriptive what my vision looks like. And then I recorded my voice. So I listen to it mm-hmm. or like you do, you can read it. Or mm-hmm. I even offer a third step that you, if you want, write it out every day. Yeah. 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 Because when you, you know, it's, it's different when you actually write your vision out as opposed to just, I mean, you can speak it. Yes. But writing it out tells you're, you're actually tricking your conscious mind um, because your conscious mind is the, the gatekeeper to the subconscious, right? So when you write it out, you're actually telling your subconscious mind that you're serious about this, that you're creating a new pattern of belief. Um, and, and there's science, all kinds of science behind that. But, um, but I, uh, my, with my clients, I absolutely have them write it out <clears throat> and then they read it you know, once or twice a day, depending on where they are in their program. But, um, and then it's a point where, you know, like at this point, I mean, I read mine every day, but when I'm reading it, I can actually see it in my mind's eye and I can actually, I mean, I can actually bring somebody else into it because it's so crystal clear in my mind. So I'm curious, what is your next big vision or what is that next thing that you're so stoked and excited to manifest? 
So I'm creating a VIP program right now for my clients. Um, and I'm really excited about this because it's a year long program. Um, and it also includes three different retreats. So we're going to be going to three different um, um, energy vortexes uh, as soon as all this COVID stuff is over. And I'm manifesting that that's going to be gone by the fall. So the first one is in the fall. Um, and I just, I, 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 I love sharing um, time with people and my heart and my passion. And, um, and I think that this would be a great um, addition to my program that I have already. So I'm really super excited about that. Um, and, and that's in the works. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Question for you. What is one big key takeaway you want listeners to get from our conversation? Key takeaway is, you know, don't settle for what, for the circumstance, the situation, or the condition that really ask yourself, what would I love? What would I love? And then start writing those things down. You know, even if you create a bucket list, you know, you just create a bucket list of a hundred things that you would love. And, you know, there, um, the, uh, Lou, Lou Holtz, he was the Notre Dame football coach for many, many years. And when he was a young man in his twenties, he didn't know what his vision or his life was going to look like. He didn't, but he knew that he loved football and he wanted to be in that arena. <clears throat> and his wife said, why don't you create a bucket list? And he created a bucket list of 100 things that he would love to do before he dies. And he's, I think he's in up in his nineties, 97, 98, something like that right now. And he, he just, just a year ago looked back at his bucket list and he had, he had knocked off almost 90 things on his bucket list that that um, he wanted to do. And so when you have a, a vision and a focus, you know, you really, you start to live into that and um, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So I would just, I would just share, you know, what would you love? Create a bucket list and go after it. For sure. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a few rapid fire questions. I'd like to ask you to wrap up the interview. Sure. First one being, what is a quote or motto that you live by? The content of my life is the curriculum of my evolution. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second one being, what is a book you're currently reading or highly recommend? I'm currently reading Think and Grow Rich. It's the third time through uh, the book and I highly recommend it um, for anyone who really, and it's not about becoming rich, right? It's about living an abundant life. Great. Do you know, I've that obviously I've read it before, but I find it, it's kind of hard to read. It is the first time. Okay. Um, Bob Proctor, actually, who is, he's a very well-renowned life coach. He carries with that book in his back pocket. He reads every, he's read it for the last 50, 60, 70 years. However, I don't even know. I think he's in his eighties now, but he reads it every single day. Yes. Love Bob. Yeah. All right. Final question for you. What advice would you give your younger self? Go for it. Just go for it. Don't let other people tell you what you can do or can't do. Don't, don't get stuck in, you know, in this, this other people's drama. Yeah. Just go for it. You have so much potential. Couldn't agree more. And what a great note to end on. Carrie, thank you so much for joining me. Heather, thank you. It's been beautiful and lovely. I wish you all the best of luck on your podcast. Mm -hmm.